This channel is for educational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions. Hi, this is Joe. I'm going to do a update on the stock market and uh, give you a better idea of where we're going from here. Um, let's go ahead and get into the charts. And um, I, I've got my uh, four time frames up for the spider. And I want to start with a monthly chart because uh, one of the things that uh, I think is pretty important is we uh, we made a move from from major low from 2020. And, uh, made, and if you take that move up to the high that was made uh, right at the end of last year, early this year, and you did the FIB grid, if you notice, we came back to the 38% retracement. So, I mean, just that alone is not enough to maybe want to go and, and go diving in. But it's an area where you want to be it's, – it's a location that is very important. And certainly something that I think is worth keeping an eye on. So at that point, you want to see how the market reacts. If you notice, last week I mentioned that I wanted to see how the month finished. So look at what happened. Not only um, did it rally off the low, but it, it created a pretty big tail, finished as a doji bar where we opened and closed basically at the same level after coming down all the way down again to the 38% retracement. Now, the other thing I mentioned last week that I still think is relevant is what is going on with this MACD. What this tells me is that I don't think that we're going to be able to just turn and go. Um, I just don't see that happening just based on the way uh, this has played out from such a far level away from the zero line. Um, so that's one thing that I wanted to uh, mention. Now, if you notice, the 18 month is still rising right now. So we haven't really lost a lot of a huge amount of momentum on this longer term time frame yet. But the MACD is giving us kind of a leading. It's sort of giving us a leading indication that we will have some problems as this works its way up towards the 450, something like that. So I think that's a pretty critical starting point. Um, on the weekly chart, what I discussed last week, and I've mentioned a few times now, is I'm not going to draw the channel lines in, but if you draw a parallel channel, we came down and hit that down at the lower end here. And we also did that on the daily chart. Again, I'm not going to draw in the channel lines, but we did that. We had divergence in place, and we broke the downtrend line, and now we're starting to work our way up. So, uh, you know, if we're if we're looking at a target, generally speaking, I would say the target is probably somewhere around the 18 week line. Now, based on the size of this bar, and we'll see how this bar finishes, it's again being done on uh, Thursday before the open, um, uh, you know, in preparation for the open on Friday morning. Um, but I think right now I'd be thinking up into this area around the 18 week and maybe a little bit more. Uh, maybe it can get a little bit higher than that. Um, the positive that we have from a momentum standpoint is that we're down into this oversold region again, which I mentioned last week. Um, and, you know, puts it in a position for some kind of a rally. The negative that we've got is confirmation to the low. So we made a new low in price and we had confirmation from the sellers and the ADX uh, here and we had confirmation and MACD to the downside here. Most of the time when that happens, we don't have a straight up affair. If you think we're going to do something like we did back in 2020 where it just keeps going, I really think that's a low probability. Okay, I think the higher probability is we work our way up and then kind of channel, probably get sloppy or sideways, something like that, and then determine where we go from there. Is this, this the pause in an ongoing bear market or is this actually a major reversal? And I don't think we know the answer to that yet. If someone put a gun to my head and say I had to make a decision right now, I would say we're still in a bear market. Um, but uh, I want to watch the quality of the rally. I want to see what kind of what happens here. I want to see what happens to the beaten up stocks, what kind of volume comes into them. And do they look like real lows or do they look like just rallies? Right now, go and look at stocks like Adobe, look at PayPal, look at Square. These are stocks that got murdered and they're, ha they all, they're all up over 5% today. So we want to kind of watch those kind of names and how they rally during this period. 
Now, um, I already mentioned what took place on the uh, the downtrend line break. I mean, one thing that's bugging me a little bit is that I was really, really hoping that we had a down day here. I was hoping we'd come down just a little bit more, make one more lower low, get a little bit closer to the 18. And then you could have called that the two after breaking the downtrend line. So we haven't really done that. Now, there are times where you don't get a, a really good two. I mean, it just kind of takes off, but it's pretty rare. Um, most of the time, even if this were to push higher right now, at some point we'll probably come down and test this line after it's turned back to the upside. Um, one thing we're going to want to be on the lookout for is as MACD gets back to the zero line, how it reacts there. So we've got a little bit more room from that standpoint, and we do have room up towards the 18 week, as I mentioned. One other thing I really wanted to talk about that I think is uh, pretty, pretty wild. So here's the hourly. Let's just talk about this. Um, look at the move in the 80X, okay? I and mean, we talked about this for, look at this whole period going down, okay? Look at, there's nobody home. I mean, there's no real buying through this whole period. And now, um, as I start, as we started up, Right. We, we got the green to hold here and then we broke out. So that was the one, two, three, one, two, three. And I was really hoping we get a little bit better pullback. This was kind of your first opportunity on a, on a legitimate pullback. It was a zero line reversal. Um, it actually qualified as a um, if you notice, these are higher bottoms above this bottom. And this low, it actually was a reverse divergence too. So you could have looked at it that way as a reversal from that standpoint. And now we're starting to kind of kick in again. Now, um, the thing I wanted to talk about is how the markets are just so fractal. Okay, the nature of the market is that you can continue to divide it up. I like to divide it up by fives. So I start with a monthly, divide that by five, get a weekly, divide that by five, get a daily, divide that by six, six and a half, I get an hourly, and then divide that by six, I get a 10 minute, divide that by five, I get a two minute. I like to do it that way. Look at the two minute chart, and I wanna show you something. I think it's pretty amazing how, how uh, useful these tools that I show you guys, and they happen over and over again. Now, the last thing I want you guys to do is start trading off of a um, two-minute chart. But I, I think it's important to recognize how these patterns develop on all time frames. So look at how we had um, a move to the upside, and we got no ADX confirmation. You see how ADX could not get above 25 during this move. Then we go down. And look at how strong the ADX was, right? So now we're going down and then we make another new low. ADX is good. Then we rally up and we make another new low and look at how the ADX does not get above 25. That's an exhaustion sign. What are we on the lookout for? A reversal, okay? We get a reversal to the upside. Now the ADX is based on the buyers and it's showing strength above 25. Does it again here, then makes a move up here on this peak here, look at how ADX could not get above 25. What are we going to look at for? A reversal. Okay, you can do your one, two, three. There's your three coming back down. Um, you could have anticipated and done it off the two uh, based on the exhaustion signal. And then look, we got strong move to the downside. And then we move up. And then look at where we come down here. See what happened? ADX could not get above 25 on this bottom. So what are we on the lookout for? In this case, an undercut and rally. And we take off, we get a little hitch, and then we move to the upside. Now, <laughs> the market is so strong here. Look at what happened. We had strong ADX, strong ADX, and then we made a move here, and ADX could not get above 25, but look at how we can't even turn it down. It won't even turn down right now. So this is probably actually getting a little late in the near term. I would be surprised. And this, this is probably going to be some kind of a climatic little top and then we pull back. But the, the key thing to, to realize here is that the patterns that I talk about using the ADX signals happen in all time frames. Now, I can go back and historically speaking and say there are a lot of times where you don't make tops and bottoms with that signal. It's pretty rare to see it happening over and over again like that. Um, with that said, um, with that said, you know, when you see it working in this favor, so now it's kind of broken, right? We got four or five really good signals off of it. Now it's not, it really didn't help us here. Uh, we never got the one, two, three to the downside, but the, but the, the fact of the matter is, is that that signal really kind of failed there. So 
Anyway, I just thought it was worth bringing up using a two minute chart, uh, not something I focus in on a lot, um, but, you know, it, it is something we can learn from if we go to these smaller time frames. Right now, you can see the clear shift in trend to the upside and um, momentum right now isn't confirming on an ADX basis, but it did on the last peak. So we made a move up here and that's where ADX confirmed. Now we're consolidating. If we go up again, we want to see ADX get above 25. If it doesn't, that would be a, a kind of a red flag. So as long as it keeps confirming the up moves, we have to assume we're, we're on our way up towards the 1840 week area. Okay, so uh, that's the update for the week. Go ahead and post any questions or comments. Thanks.